The British Army had about 40,000 soldiers when the French Revolutionary Wars began in 1793, and it was poorly organised, hardly effective, and a kind of pointless combat force. Yet by 1813, it had changed into a fighting force with about a quarter of a million soldiers at its peak, one which never saw a single setback, or major setback, during its course of the war. Now this is the summerical history of the British Army during Napoleon. At this point, there was no formal command structure, and depending on where the army units were stationed, different government departments were in charge of those units. For example, the Irish establishment, rather than the War Office in London, was in charge of troops stationed in Ireland. First moves towards a formal organisation were made in about 1793, with the appointment of 15 general officers to lead military districts in England and Wales. The army at this point had three household cavalry regiments, 27 line regiments of cavalry, 77 numbered regiments of infantry, two colonial corps, one in New South Wales and one in Canada, and in 1793 just before Britain got entangled in the French Revolutionary Wars. The artillery at this point had four artillery battalions, two independent companies in India and a company of cadets, all of which were secretly administrated by a board of ordnance. The Royal Horse Artillery, specialised officer bodies were the Corps of Royal Engineers and Invalid Corps of Royal Engineers. The Royal Military Artificers were also present. Now, during the actual French Revolutionary Wars, Britain took part in multiple campaigns. This includes Mysore between 1789 and 1792, Toulon, Flanders, West Indies, Musenberg and Ceylon, Ireland, Mysore and Holland, and then Egypt. Moreover, British were also involved in Maratha, the West Indies, Hanover, Naples, Sicily in the Mediterranean, South Africa in the Plate, Denmark, Alexandria, Wallacherin, Indian Ocean and the East Indies, the Peninsula War, Holland, War in North America, Waterloo Campaign, the list really goes on. I will go into more detail about these if you'd like me to, but I shan't for now because we have a rank structure to get to, and now with that, let's continue. You may talk about your lunches or your Irish Jews or Lairs, the Aberdeen militias are the Queen's own volunteers. In 1736, the Brits introduced the Field Marshal rank, which would give supreme command of the British Army. The first person to occupy the position was the First Lord of Orkney, who participated in both the Williamite Wars in Ireland and the Spanish War of Secession. Arthur Wellesley, the Duke of Wellington, and Prince Edward, Duke of Kent and Strathairn, will be the most noteworthy holders of this during the Napoleonic War. And during this time, the rank insignia on the coat sleeve was six evenly spaced golden laces. The rank of general within the British Army was the highest general officer rank and much like its inferiors, the rank's role was not clear cut and could button up over a number of duties. The role could perform everything from staff duties to foreign liaison to foreign governors as well as branch of service commands or army commands. Some famous holders of said rank include Sir General William Anston, 1st Baronet, General Sir William Henry Clinton and General George Ramsay, 9th Earl of Dalhousie. The rank insignia consists of evenly spaced four laces on the cuff of the coat. The rank of Lieutenant General was the second highest general officer rank within the British Army and held considerable command over campaigns. Usually commanding a corps or other large body of troops, they may also serve in a position of staff on the marshals or allied staffs, and the rank insignia on the coat sleeve consists of six paired golden laces. The rank of Major General was the lowest rank within the general officers of the British Army. It was the rank that could not be bought through monetary commission and was only given through promotion to the rank. The rank was famously held by British General Robert Ross, who fought in the United States, the Peninsula War and in France amongst other campaigns. The rank insignia on the coat sleeve consists of four golden laces, each being in two pairs. The rank of Brigadier, later renamed to Brigadier General then back to Brigadier during the Napoleonic era, was the most senior staff rank within the British Army. This was until it was issued as a general rank later on in the Army's history. The role may either command a brigade of 2,000 to 3,000 men, or act as Director of Staff, or have a military political liaison role with one of many allies during the course of the war. During this time, the rank insignia on the coat sleeve consists of three golden laces with the upper two being in a pair. The rank of colonel could lead well a regiment, a battalion, could act as a staff officer or a liaison, and its rank insignia consisted of a double golden shoulder epaulet, both emblazoned with a Tudor crown and the cross bath star. 
The rank of Lieutenant Colonel would hold many similar abilities as its superior. With command over a battalion or second in command of a regiment, it would most often be located on either the Adjutant General Staff or perhaps with the Colour Guard and Field Formation. The rank insignia consists of two golden shoulder epaulets, both emblazoned with a Tudor crown. Because it was fully subject to the whim of its superiors, the position of Major was very significant rank in the British Army. A person with this rank could lead a battalion, a detachment company, or work as a staff officer, or a liaison to another army. The rank insignia consisted of a double golden shoulder epaulets on both shoulders emblazoned with a George Cross Bath Star. The rank of captain held command over a company of about 120 soldiers. Again, numbers fluctuated depending on the theatre of war and the period during the war. The rank insignia consisted of a blank golden epaulet on the left shoulder only. The rank of lieutenant was the middle rank of the company officers and was considered junior. The rank would hold command over a platoon of about 40 soldiers, though this could change. The rank insignia consisted of a blank golden shoulder epaulet on the left shoulder only. The rank of Ensign was the lowest officer within the British Army until it was replaced by a second lieutenant in 1871. According to Thomas Venn, the duties of an Ensign are to include not only carrying the colour, but assisting the captain and lieutenant of a company, and in their absence, having their authority. The rank held no insignia during the war. The sergeant major position was formally adopted by the British Army in the 1790s. Unlike today, they would have served in a field command, but their primary responsibility was administration. The position would also be in charge of a regiment or company's ordnance, quartermastery and sergeant drilling. Additionally, they would also help the company's subordinate officers and act as a vital channel of communication between them and the enlisted men. The rank insignia was made up of four chevrons facing downwards. The Colour Sergeant was the second highest non-commissioned officer rank within the British Army during the Napoleonic Wars, introduced into the system in 1813. Colour Sergeants of the British Line Regiments protected ensigns, the most junior officers who were responsible for carrying their battalion's colours to rally troops in battle. For this reason, to reach the rank of a Colour Sergeant was considered, well, a prestigious attainment, granted normally to those sergeants who had displaced courage on the battlefield. The rank insignia consisted of one chevron facing downward, with the British colours placed above. During the Napoleonic War, the sergeant was frequently employed rank in the British Army. The sergeant's responsibilities would be seeing, well, a squad of men and their condition of those men, as well as drawing them into action. The three chevrons facing downwards made this rank symbol. The corporal was the lowest ranking NCO, with its roles being to oversee a small squad of men. They would also assist the sergeant in acquiring food and equipment, as well as drilling the troops into condition. The rank insignia consisted of two chevrons facing downward. The rank of chosen man, or, well, what is equal to that of Lance Corporal, was more so unique to the British Army Rifle Brigades. The soldier was given the title because of both his superior marksmanship skills and his field leadership abilities. The rank insignia was a single downward facing chevron or a single stripe on the sleeve. The private was the lowest ranking soldier within the British Army, and his title may differ depending on the branch of service, though there is little else to say about this rank. Well thank you guys, I really hope you enjoyed today's video as much as I enjoyed making it. We've just hit a thousand subscribers, so thank you so much for the love and support guys. Um, yeah, I'm, this will probably be my last video before I go on my break, so I won't be gone for long, it'll be 2-3 weeks, just so I can upload a couple videos on the other channel, and then I'll come back to this and start on my President series, but with that guys, I'm gonna wrap up, thank you so much again guys, it's been... It's been amazing this last couple of months just to see this channel absolutely bloom and it's we've had our ups and downs but thank you so much guys.